so what's up youtube what's up everyone i hope you're well today so today we're going to do a reaction video about an african-american who comes to rwanda and later lives uh, to namibia and um there are some popular reasons because there's some problems that he faces in rwanda which forces him to leave so this is the first reaction video that i'm going to do about rwanda i've never done any reaction video about rwanda so first of all i'll take this chance to Thank all my fans from the United States, from the United Kingdom, and in other part outside Africa, be it South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, and everywhere, and even my Rwanda fans who are watching me. And it's a thanksgiving to people in the United States, United Kingdom, and everyone who is in the overseas. Uh, happy thanksgiving to you. So let's watch the video and see what's the aftermath of this video. So let's get it barrier that I experienced there so I'm gonna give you guys a quick uh, story time uh, it's pretty interesting of how I left the house to get a yellow fever vaccine one day and I ended up all the way across town at a prison speaking to a prisoner who was in handcuffs okay so when you're traveling around Africa it's good to have a yellow fever vaccine a lot of places actually require you to have the yellow fever vaccine so i was planning to leave rwanda actually in africa um that's one a requirement even in kenya everyone has a yellow fever vaccine um i, I wish i could have located it where it is but it is somewhere in my arms so yeah, it's something which we normally take as africans so when you come to africa um except those are one of the you know uh procedures that you need to do or you need to take while coming to africa so i think he was trying to find a place where I can uh, get that. So it means it also means that maybe you never stayed long in, you haven't stayed long in Rwanda, or maybe you stayed long in Rwanda and he was asked a couple of questions with people as to why you need to get the, you know, the vaccine. I was planning to leave Rwanda, potentially, and I knew that I would need my yellow fever vaccine. So we actually went to the hospital. We went to King Faisal Hospital, wonderful hospital. I have a video. You're gonna go ahead and be able to click up here and check that video out about my experience at King Faisal Hospital in Kigali, Runda. However, I went to the hospital that day to see if I could get my yellow fever vaccine. We spoke to the, the gentleman at the reception and at first he had a little trouble understanding, but after he really figured out that we were talking about a yellow fever vaccine, he told us they didn't offer it at that hospital, but that I could go to a location in Gikondo. I'm gonna go ahead and have the map here. So you saw on the map where we started and where we ended up. So he told us to go to Gikondo, a police station in Gikondo, and that there would be a facility nearby, right next door, where I could obtain a yellow fever vaccine. So we leave Kisozi sector the following day and we go to the Gikondo police station because that's where he told us to go and that it would be next door. We arrive at the Gikondo police station and there is a security guard who's toting a rifle, which is common in a lot of African countries. And I approach the gentleman, the, the security guard, and I tell him, hey, could I get a yellow fever vaccine here? He's like, huh? I said, I need to get a yellow fever vaccine. I was told at a hospital that I could get my fax, my yellow fever vaccine here. And he said, huh? I okay, there's one thing that I want to say is that, and I've always been telling you, while coming to Africa, um, always find, you know, a local person that, uh, for example, you're coming to a place like Rwanda and you understand that um, they don't entirely speak English or the, the population speak English in Rwanda is so small. So it's always important to find maybe a local who understands English and talk to them, tell them your problem that, ah, you know, I want to go and, you know, do this, do this, do this. It's an easier way to go, you know, and they'll take you. Because this uh, buddy, he had a friend, seems he also was an African-American. I don't know because both of them seemed um, not to understand what both of them were saying. So to avoid such kinds of confusion and wasting times in this, uh, these places, get a local person who will help you or not just a local person but a person who really understands english and knows what they do so i think that's important up to that point i said it another time and maybe two other times and tried to use different phrases and words and finally the security guard goes uh, and points 
into the police station. And I'm thinking, okay, huh. And by the way, there was no building next door to this police station, okay? It was in a pretty developed area, but there was no building next door. There was like an abandoned shack over here, building, and then nothing really over here. And the police station consisted of two adjoined buildings. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is what the gentleman at the hospital was referring to. So I asked the security guard just to be sure because I kind of peeked into that door and it looked didn't look like a facility where they offered vaccines, right? So I look at the security guard and I'm like, I can get a yellow fever vaccine here? And he goes, uh, uh-huh. Oh man, since this guy, um, he had a tough time um, trying to find a yellow fever vaccine. And I don't know what's, uh, what's the problem because the problem here seems to be um, the language barrier. Uh, that's the only problem here because I believe uh, people in Rwanda are so hospitable. That's what I really believe because they are one of the most peaceful countries. And yes, yeah, so of course, they're most peaceful, uh, the most peaceful people. But the problem might come when I think they, there is an issue with um, language barrier because uh, most of them, I think, speak, uh, how does it call Rwanda or something like that. Yeah. So, so I go in. All right, you guys. I go inside and there is a group of people sitting near the entrance, maybe like five, six people. And of course, they're all staring at me like I'm an alien. And then there is a group of gentlemen who are sitting along the far wall. OK, the op opposite wall. The, my friend with me is kind of nervous and uncomfortable coming into this facility, this police station. I was uncomfortable as well, but I thought to myself, well, maybe this is what the gentleman said, so I'm gonna come in here. This one of the men who was on the wall, on the bench along the wall, says, good morning, sir, to me. He says, good morning. I say, hi, good morning. And I said, are you here to get a, fa are, is this the line for the vaccines? And he looks confused and he says, prisoner, the prisoner something like that all right and i say oh um he's a prisoner i suppose the security guard sees that i'm talking to this man along the wall and he comes and tells me no no, no. wait 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 why would a prisoner um talk to you um i don't know why did, did it seem that it's uh, he's so friendly to them because i also believe that you are not supposed to talk to the prisoner when you get to you know a place uh why did the prisoner try to talk to him? I don't know. Kindly guys tell me in the comment section. No, don't talk to him essentially. Sit here, wait here. So I sit down and then my friend who was with me says, didn't you see that those guys along the wall are handcuffed? And lo and behold, I look and sure enough, the gentleman who said good morning was in handcuffs and all the people along the wall were in handcuffs. Some were handcuffed to each other. They were handcuffed. I didn't notice when I first walked in, I was looking for someone who could direct us in the right way. And since that man spoke to me as soon as I walked into the facility, I thought maybe he was just gonna be a friendly man who saw that I was a foreigner and would wanna help me. And he was a prisoner, all right? So I'm like, okay, awkward. Oh, this is a very awkward situation. I'm sitting up in this police station. There's prisoners all along the wall. What's going on here? So, we're waiting for a while, waiting, waiting, waiting. And finally, a man comes in, a gentleman comes in. He's like, why here? Why are you here? What problem? What problem? We're like, no, I was told to come here because I need a yellow fear vaccine. He's like, eh, English, French, Kinyaranda. I'm like, I only speak English. Then he turns to my friend and he's like, English, Swahili, Kinyaranda. My friend's like, only English. He's just like, why are you here? What's the problem? Ah, so it means that they walked with uh, a fellow uh, African-American, also a person who doesn't uh, understand Kenya Rwanda. Yeah, probably it's all about, you know, um, uh, the language barrier thing which is uh, trying to happen here. And the only problem that our brother did, um, he never walked with a local or a person who might try to help them translate what they're trying to say. I've said this and I've always been saying this, if you go to a place, especially in an African place where majority of people don't speak English, it is advisable to work with a local who understands English because of course there are people who normally understand English. So I don't I don't see it if it's uh, a big deal to you know find a local or a person who understands English. And um, it's 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 a problem because um, this is a correctional service. So 
I think it was advisable if they could at least have one person who could have at least spoken English because it's important. Um, which makes which makes me ask another question: How are the locals? You know, are uh, people who don't who don't understand Kenya Rwanda treated while in prisons? Because I understand uh, Rwanda is a beautiful place with tourists who come. Now, when they experience problems, how do they address themselves? You know, because at, on the on the flip on the on the flip side, uh, it's not everyone who will find a translator to you know to talk to them or talk about them. Um, how are they addressing these issues? Kindly tell me in the comment section if you want to. Problem. We're like. We were told to come to a building next to the police station in order to get a yellow fever vaccine. He's like, no, what problem? What problem? Why here? Hey. And he started to get a little riled up, which is making me uncomfortable and making my friend very uncomfortable. Because now no, brother, you went uh, on a prison. You went in a correctional service. So the environment there, it's totally understandable if the guy tried to treat you like that. Also, it might be that uh, the guy maybe was trying to help and he thought that you were robbed. That's why he gave you that kind of, you know, uh, environment, seemed to be giving you attention, a little bit attention. But it's okay to be scared the way you're scared, but you understand that the place you entered, um, the people who received you never expected a person like you to be there. I think that's the old problem that which is also there. All right, because now I'm thinking, are they gonna arrest us? Did they think we are criminals and that's why we're in the police station? Come to find out, I believe he thought we were coming to the police station to report a potential problem. Foreigners usually come to the police station to report a robbery or something like that. So I believe he was trying to help us report a problem because he kept saying, what problem, what problem? We didn't have a problem. And he clearly did not speak English. The security guard didn't speak English. This gentleman who was in charge certainly did not speak English, not enough to really communicate anything. And so finally, we, our taxi ride who brought us there was still outside. So we went to him and he kind of spoke better English. So he was in Kenya Runda, he spoke to them and told them that I was looking to get my vaccine. And they said vaccine in French or something. I forgot the word. All right. And they said, oh, no, not here, not here. Right. And so we finally got in the taxi and left. It was such a relief. OK, because I literally thought, OK, am I going to get arrested today for something I didn't even do? It was a really scary, awkward situation. So we get into the cab and we pull out and this person, the person who was in charge at the police station told us to try this other facility, okay? That was near, not far from this police station, okay? But it certainly wasn't next door. It was about three, four or five blocks away. So we go to that other facility, the taxi driver drives us there, we get out and there are these um, signs saying RBC, which stands for um, Runda, um, what is it? Runda Biomedical Center. RBC stands for Runda Biomedical Center. So we see these signs and we're like, okay, we're probably in the right place here. So there's people walking in and I see locals, including a few foreigners walking into this facility. And there's a woman waiting at the beginning. And so I go up to her and I say, hi, I'm actually looking to get a yellow fever vaccine. Do you guys offer yellow fever vaccine here? And she goes, yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, we proceed. You go to another checkpoint. There was another woman there at a booth. And I'm like, hi, she's like, hello. I'm like, I actually am looking to get my yellow fever vaccine. Can I get that here? She was like, oh yeah, proceed. Basically, I go. Now we're inside the facility, this building. It was kind of like an open air, almost like in a facility where they would have like a fair or something like that. But anyways, there were all these tables. It was quiet, it was clean and nice. Um, and it was quiet and organized. And then there was another lady who escorted people to the direction they were going. And there were people at tables with laptops and they were helping clients or customers or patients, whatever. And she's, I tell her, I'm here to get a yellow fever vaccine. And she's like, okay, yeah, sit down. She directs me to a table. I sit down. The gentleman at the laptop is working away. He's like, hi. I'm like, hi, I'm here to get a yellow fever vaccine. He's like, huh? I was like, hi, I'm here to get a yellow fever vaccine. He's like, yellow fever. This one thing you need to understand, you know, you keep, uh, you keep on hearing uh, most of the people he's talking about saying, huh, when he's talking. Okay, you see, um, 
I think the type of not the type of English generally, but how you African Americans speak, you tend to speak a little bit faster. So it's not easier for an African who is not used to hear you talking, catch up with everything you're saying. Uh, bearing the fact that uh, Rwandese, uh, they don't speak English entirely. So you understand, that's why they, try, they keep on saying, huh, huh, when, they, when you say something, I mean, they're trying to tell you, uh, will you pardon again? So, ha, ha, that's why you keep on hearing the ha, ha again. So, probably that's the reason. This is only for COVID. Wait, 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 wait. Passing for people, and then you are told that it's for COVID. Um, it's like looking for a, it's like looking for something, and then when you reach at the last point, you told that no, it's not here, and you have went through a lot of processes in finding the same thing. I understand our brother could be could have been frustrated because all along when he's walking, he's being told that are uh, you going to take a vaccination for a little favor? Yes, everyone is leading him in front. Then when he reached at the office, the main office is being told that here we only take COVID-19 tests or vaccines. So you see, um, our brother is a little bit, you know, frustrated by the things which are going on. So I would have been frustrated actually about the same thing. But I don't know that's the main reason why he left Rwanda. It could be something serious if that's the main reason why he left Rwanda. And actually it makes sense because um, communication is key because you're going to talk to people, you're going to interact with people, um, doing a lot of things, includes buying, talking to your neighbors, you know, going to the show and doing a lot of stuff. It requires a lot of communication. And when English, uh, when there is a language barrier, and that's my problem. Now, my question is this. How are our visitors who are coming to Rwanda surviving, most especially speaking English um, visitors, how are they surviving? Um, also, African Americans who are staying, or the Black Americans who are staying in Rwanda, kindly tell us in the comment section, how are you um, trying to cope up with this? Because since the majority of people in Rwanda doesn't uh, speak English entirely, which is okay, because that's according to, you know, the history and just everything, including colonization. So, tell me what you think in the comment section. Let's continue. I was like, yes. He was like, no, this is only for COVID. So this facility, this RBC station that they had set up was to administer COVID vaccines, okay? So now I'm at this facility. I spoke to three different women on my way in and they all said yes, yes, yes to the yellow fever. No, 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 this was not the place for the yellow fever vaccine. So I get myself up and my friend and I leave. And now we're confused, like, where do we go? So I look up on my phone and I see a place called RBC, like the official headquarters for disease vaccination prevention. Yellow fever would fall into that category, okay? And so it's not far from this facility, actually. So we get in the taxi and we go there and finally, Finally, we arrive at the place and they say, yes, this is absolutely where you can get your yellow fever vaccine, but we're closed. So, yeah. Oh, so they went to another place to uh, try to find a yellow fever vaccine. So they were told to come on mind. Maybe they, they reached late when it was already closed and maybe it was nearing the weekend. So they had to come on Monday because they thought the people work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday for public offices like health facilities, hospitals all that stuff but some health facilities in africa especially in kenya where i am they work until on saturday even the banks operate on saturday then they close um they close around 12 noon something like that yeah so i think that's the reason why they had to come on monday that's the story i know it's a long story but i wanted you guys to really get a feel of what it's like in rwanda if you do not speak Kenya Runda, okay? Because it makes it very difficult, scary, challenging. The guy at the hospital originally that first day at King Faisal, he could have told us directly to go to the RBC main headquarters for vaccinations and disease prevention. He didn't tell us that. The, um, I forgot to tell you that the taxi driver also had no idea where we were going and he kind of was confused. Oh, no. 
so it's generally a problem. I don't know how um, people are surviving and um, as I've said, Rwanda is a beautiful place, but again, if you have a problem with communication, that's one thing we need to address in, I mean, different ways um, in which you can address them. Because I believe communication is something which is so, so important for people and everywhere you go. Because you can imagine they also having a problem with, you know, the taxi driver who couldn't listen or couldn't understand or compre comprehend everything they were saying. So you understand how it's so serious. Uh, the security guard at the police station clearly didn't speak English. He told us that I could go into the prison to get a vaccine, which was totally false and could have landed us in trouble, right? The gentleman who was in charge of the prison or in that area certainly didn't know anything and was kind of getting mad at us because we wanted a yellow fever vaccine and he didn't understand. So, um, and then the three women, three women at the RBC telling me that yes, I could get my yellow fever vaccine in that facility when I could not. They heard vaccination, right? So they had enough understanding of English to pick up vaccination. So they were assuming COVID vaccine, but no, I was saying yellow fever, which is a very different thing, right? So imagine if an emergency happened and I needed to get an inhale or a rescue inhaler for asthma, or I needed to get some other type of treatment and they didn't understand, okay? Yeah, I think that's serious. The issue that he has addressed, um, what if you're having an emergency and people around you can't understand what you're trying to say? It's not even in Rwanda itself, but generally, why is it? I think this is something which is serious that we need to address um, when coming to Africa. So understand the language that the locals speak in the place that you're going. This will help you with, you know, um, trying to cope up with them. And it will also be easier for you to interact with them. I'm not telling you that not to go to Rwanda. Rwanda is a beautiful place you can go, but try to understand their language or just before going to Rwanda, find a person who you can talk to, a person who can, you know, um, just before coming, you know, tell you that, or try find your fellow African Americans or Black Americans who are already there, or any other visitor who have come to, you know, um, Rwanda before. Talk to them, find them. Uh, there are a couple of places you can find people through social media, but the only problem with that is, uh, you know, trusting people. You can't just find a person online and trust them. For example, you can't just trust me because I'm talking to you in front of the screen. So it will take time for you just before coming to a place like Rwanda. Try to find a person who speaks English because the entirely majority of the people don't speak English. They speak Kirwandi. So try to understand that. And just before coming, make sure that you are well, um, you understand where you're going. And just before buying anything, uh, find a person who can also help you because you may waste a lot of time just trying to find something which is simple. Like for example, this brother here he was just trying to find, you know, yellow fever vaccine, but he couldn't find because I believe that yellow fever vaccine is in Rwanda big time. But the problem was, you know, um, language barrier. That was the problem. So kindly, kindly, kindly before coming to Africa or before choosing a place to come, try to understand the language that they speak. Secondly, if you don't understand the language, find a person who understands the language and understands English. So that when you come, you don't have, you know, a lot of difficulties in trying to adapt in the place. Um, generally, I think that's what's important for you to do. So, Rwanda is beautiful country. Kenya Rwanda is a beautiful language. Some people do speak English and you could get around on while well, as a tourist there. But if you're planning to live there or move there, I highly recommend you learn Kenya Rwanda. You got to learn the Kenya Rwanda. And in the meantime, though, make a friend. There are people who speak English proficiently. Make a friend who you can trust. Make a connection, whether it be a real estate agent, whether it be a gentleman or a gentle woman who works at the restaurant you will go to or works at the hotel in which you're staying when you arrive. It's pretty easy to make a friend. So make friends. The people there are very friendly. They tend to want to help sometimes. And um, yeah, so stay tuned. So guys, from our brother's experience who went to Rwanda and finally went to Namibia, we have a lot of things to learn from them. And most of them have also said in the middle of the videos, um, always try to find a person who you can go, I mean, a person who can help you 
understand what's going on in the place because our brother carried a fellow friend who also doesn't understand Kenya Rwanda, which it's a problem, you understand? So having a person who understands the locals' language, that's the greatest important thing because when you reach to a place where you don't know people, the only people who can help you are the locals. And the only way to communicate with them is through, you know, understanding their language because there is no way you're going to go in a place where you don't understand what people communicate, especially when they don't speak English entirely. So that's one thing that we need to, you know, put into consideration when going to a country. At least try to find out what language are these people trying to speak because language barrier is the biggest problem when, you know, trying to communicate with people. So always try to find, you know, try to find a way of getting a way of communicating with people. Otherwise, you live hell on earth when... It's not only in Africa, even other Asian countries, try to, like Chinese places, find a person, if you don't understand Chinese, find a person who speaks English or a person can help you in speaking English. I don't know if there are apps which can help you, you know, speak African local language. I don't know if they've uh, been put, because for when you go to China, there is this phone app where you can try to understand what a person is trying to tell you. And it translates things to you, so which makes it so easy for you to understand, I mean, what they are saying. So thank you guys for watching the video and tell me what in, uh, in the comment section uh, what the brother went through. Uh, if it's okay, uh, this is Eugene the African Kid. If you're watching this video, kindly consider subscribing to my channel. So guys, see you in my next video. Peace, love and harmony. Salute.